Oren Gabay. Yes, sir. My dear brother, my dear friend, my my student from uh, days gone by. Days gone by. Mitzvah, you, I just got to say you did a great job and it sounded amazing. And I hate to put you on the spot, but one day I'm going to ask you, recite me your Haftarah. <laughs> it's going to be tough. <laughs> You're going to do it. So Oren Gabay, I, uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming to uh, for me. join me at the Up Close and Personal. Uh, and this is just a way, you know, a very, uh, you know, unplugged way of talking uh, and just uh, talking about everything, about sure. uh, you and your life with your kids. Love to know. Please tell everybody your, your wife's name and your kids. So what do they do? Okay, so a little intro. My wife, uh, my name is Oren uh, Gabay. Gabay is the proper pronunciation. And yeah. I'm Canadian now. And uh, I have a wonderful na wife named Karen Shabbat, who's also a member of the Spanish uh, her family prior to uh, our, our wedding and marriage. So she's been part of the congregation for a long time. Hi. And we've got three wonderful kids, David, uh, Lena, and uh, and Jonathan, age uh, nine, seven, and five. And all three of them are attending Solomon Schechter. Uh, they're actually attending homeschooling these days so due to this right uh, and uh yeah we well, you know feature little uh congregants uh good, good then, that's, that's beautiful that's beautiful we need a lot of people like you in the synagogue young people it's great it's great to have that and you also uh, a newly dog owner yes yes i didn't <laughs> have enough responsibility in my life so we decided to uh to get a dog and uh i will say it's about day six and it was a questionable decision thus far but I'm, it, will, it will become a bit easier as time goes on i'm sure i as a dog owner i can tell you that it gets easier your kids get used to the dog and uh, you're gonna see it's a great addition it's a great addition it's good well i'm happy um Oren, I wanted to ask you a quick question, and I know you're very involved in the synagogue. You are on the board, uh, and uh, some family members also are on the board, uh, your family members. Um, and so you guys are like, you know, founding, you know, in a sense, when I say founding members, members that are longstanding uh, and have been very involved uh, in, the, in, in this congregation. This COVID, uh, you know, pandemic, and also even prior to that, you know, all the, you know, the ups and downs of any congregation that could happen in every synagogue, in every synagogue in this city. Uh, what do you see your role, uh, you know, in this congregation in the future? Uh, well, you know, months from now, years from now. I mean, I, I, so just a little background. Uh, you know, my father was a past president of, of, of the Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, was very involved uh, and it was very involved way before then as well. I mean, he was involved for, uh, I think, ma uh, majority of my teenage years. I remember my father having a heavy involvement in, in the synagogue. Right. And my uh, my late mother-in-law, Katie uh, Shabbat, uh, Katie Nathaniel, uh, as well was a treasurer at one point and was very, very involved. So, you know, as I was growing up, I saw family members that were uh, on the executives uh, committees, which of course is a higher level of responsibility. Uh, and then more recently, um, my wife's uncle, David, Katie's brother. Uh, That's right. Very involved, and uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, to say the least, uh, many other uh, people that we know, uh, cousins and, uh, and, and close family members. So in terms of my involvement, um, you know, I, I, I think I'm a good person that can assist in getting things done uh, and to help get some clarity on, on decision-making processes. When Correct. A bit unclear, a bit opaque. It's very hard often to find uh, decisions that are going to meet everybody's criteria. Um, and I think at one point you got to talk it through and see what are the, the priorities, what are we trying to achieve, what are we looking after, uh, and try to remove some of the the noise, if you will, and try and get to the what I call the lowest common denominator. Uh, <laughs> is the, is, you know, and I, I, I think because of um, experience I've had over the years and, and, and my life and business, I, have, uh, I can achieve that often. And I'm uh, I can see myself helping execute um, plans. So you know, when committees come up or if the uh, executives come up and say we need uh, some help on this project called tasks and projects so my experience is it's sometimes better to break things down and put things in specific tasks and uh, you know deliverables as they say um, right. and i could you know i've spoken to past uh, members of the executive and told them that you know you could ask on your regular board trustees to assist in that function right and give them a specific uh, objective that you need assistance with and uh 
I, I'm just one of those people who's better when I have a clearly defined expectation of what's needed for me. Uh, and yeah. So I, yeah. I, I don't mind putting myself in that position because I'm not, I'm not shy to commit to things. If I'm not comfortable, I'll say I'm not, but if, if I can do it, I'll, I'll do it. And I think that's a smart way to surround the board with, um, with many people who feel that way, uh, people who get things done. And, uh, you know, call them a very big to-do list of, of small executables that need to be done on a regular basis. And then some bigger projects that probably need some, you know, assistance in decision-making um, and some ideas. So I think that's where I see in the, in the near term that I would see my involvement because I am a stage in my life with three little children, a puppy and uh, <laughs> a business. So, you know, you want to make sure that when you take on things that you, you know, that you can, that you look. Everybody wants to help out, but you have to deliver the responsibility. Exactly. Right. So I think sometimes when it's not clearly defined, you know, you have a tendency sometimes to 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 do what you can do and not do the extras. But That's right. So it doesn't get so it doesn't get really it doesn't get done when there's unclarity, when it's not clear exactly what your job is and what you're doing and everything. Now you've been very involved also, uh, or in in uh, and, you know, somehow in the decision making of a new clergy, uh, you know, and uh, the, the, it has been a very interesting year, uh, if I can say that. And, uh, you know, first of all, uh, the, the, the beginning of my uh, work here, because, you know, I go way back at the synagogue as a kid. Uh, which is very interesting in a kids choir. Then after that, I really got, uh, you know, involved in this congregation. And then I left for some 30 years, you know, doing so many different things in the, in the, in, in, uh, in Canada and outside of Canada. And it's been a really amazing experience. Well, when I got back, I saw there was a very big difference in where it was in a sense where the, the demographics of all the people that used to be here now moved away, let's say in Cote St. Luke or, or, or other areas. And unfortunately, because they don't travel on Shabbat and everything, unfortunately, they're not able to come here. So how do we replenish this also? As a new clergy, um, I've been looking at this and trying to attract new blood, new families, young families. So Bar Mitzvah has been, has been a very good way, segue, when, People call me for bar bat mitzvah. I told them, tell them, you know, be a member here. That's the way it's supposed to be done. And then I'll teach them and I'll stay with them. And so thank God we've been like 15 to 20 new families, you know, just bring on. So we want to do more of that. How do we get young people like you and your kids in the synagogue and say, you know what, I'm not coming. I'm not going to come just because I love prayer or I love organized you know religion this let's not kids aren't kid ourselves a lot of people don't you know don't care for that too much but how do you get them to just come in through the doors and then maybe say you know what this is a great place to be you know once in a while so i think you know at the end of the day you got to look at like you said like your target demographic if you will so if you yeah. had very very um, call it observant families religious families living in yeah. around the corner you would have a more natural, I think, attendance, right, that you'd be looking at. So if a lot of those families moved into other areas, the the, the attendance that you'd be looking for are less, it seems, based on what we're, we're just discussing, would be less likely that it's, you know, regular visitors of Shabbat services. And it's more bringing right. people outside of their, their regular um, call it routine. So a big part of that, I think, is accessibility. So uh, the reason why I've been very, very... Um, happy and supportive of both the, yourself and Rabbi Pinto is because I believe both of you have that, that character traits of accessibility, make people feel at ease, make people feel comfortable. Yeah. If you're somebody who's not used to going on a regular basis to synagogue, who's not fully engaged in, in prayer, it, you know, the environment's going to be a very, very big part of it. So I think the environment and, you know, as anybody else who's hosting an event, call it for lack of a better term, if you have people over your home for dinner, if, if, if you make people feel comfortable and at ease, they're going to feel, that's right, gonna enjoy themselves. So synagogues and religion and, and all that sort of stuff by nature has a very, um, you know, call it a traditional, a little bit of a, so it's, I think that's where the, the clergy coming in being uh, uh, people who are more accessible would be very, very effective. And I think uh, you know, you guys, uh, both you and Rabbi Pinto asked me to attend a, a, a Thursday morning services last week. And, 
I did it primarily because because um, you asked. And 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 interestingly enough, as when I got there, I, I got to see some people I haven't seen in a long time. I have uh, my uncle Sam, who he, we lost my aunt a year ago. It was just around the year. Um, I saw uh, Ronnie Michelle, Danny Sharabani. It was nice seeing people, especially during yeah. the situation. Um, it was nice seeing people that you don't see that regularly. Um, and uh, and uh, it kind of reminds you a little bit of that normal period that, that you're missing, that it's not only uh, <laughs> by design. So it's, uh, it was, I think my experience um, is that when you do things, you typically enjoy yourself. You usually come out of it in a positive way. And I think if that message is brought upon to people to say, look, you know, we're trying our best here uh, and we, we have a job to do and uh, we need your support. And, you know, the same way we need your support in, in, in a fundraising function or whatever it is, what we really need is we need attendance. We need people to come. And, and, 100%. and I think at the end of the day, if you're somebody accessible and likable uh, and uh, uh, charming in a sense, you know, whatever you want to call it, I think people will say, once in a while, they'll, they'll be busy, they'll be like this, but I think if they go there and they have a good time, and I think a key part of it is just when you see other people uh, that you know, uh, you'll have a good time. I mean, the, the whole definition of the word congregation is to congregate, right? So congregate means exactly. you, you can congregate in your backyard, you can congregate anywhere. So the question is, humans like to congregate because we're social creatures. So I think I think there's a lot of um, good there. Uh, and I think that, you know, yourself and, and, Ra and Rabbi Pinto have those character traits where I think you can, uh, you can bring people in. Make them feel that's amazing. I think, and I think, that's, the best, I think it's, that's where you would start and you would build off of that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and not too aggressively. In a sense. But people come around to their comfort zone and realize that they're religious. Yeah, you can't yeah. force, I mean, yeah, you can't force them and you can't really, you know, be too much behind it. I think it has to come from yourself, from the person themselves. But there is this, uh, this uh, like you mentioned, uh, there is this, you know, connect when you say, oh, you know what? The clergy that's sitting up there is not only my clergy, but they're my friends. They're my friends. The minute, that's, that's, that's exactly it. And the minute you do that, then you break this, this wall or that ice, you know, because the olden, olden days you saw the cantor or the rabbi, you know, yeah, they're like they're sitting up there you know they're untouchable you know let's do something else with that and that those days are gone and i want to see like your kids and other kids like running around the synagogue who cares i mean they don't have to disturb the service but in this in the meantime we want to hear young I, people i think you want to hear that atmosphere people like seeing young people they also like seeing you know kids grow quickly so it's fun you know, a couple months go by, you see, you see, uh, you know, a cousin's child that you haven't seen in a couple of months. Everyone's busy in their own little worlds right now. That's uh, right. I mean, they always are, but especially, uh, especially now people are, are very, very siloed in what they do. And it doesn't hurt even for yourself. Uh, I mean, I'm a believer that if you stay in the same place and you don't open up new doors and you don't, you don't look at new things, you're never going to advance as, as an individual uh, at all. So I, I don't see how that, you know, why that would be any different in, in this context. Yeah. So, I think so like the easy. breaking of the cocoon, yeah. I think um, so, because have, you go there and you, you, yeah, go ahead, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No. No, 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 go ahead. You, no, you, I'm just you, saying, you, I, you, I believe you, that there's a lot of good value there. So I believe that between yeah. the, the social aspect, the understanding, a, a passage, giving you, you know how it is, you hear a passage and it, you reflect and, and maybe you have an incident that week and 100%. that's enough. Somebody's struggling with somebody, a, a decision in their career or an issue with a family member, um, you know, you sort of just need a little nudge to give you that that kind of opening. And if you don't put yourself out there, you can't receive it. So I think that's a bit of a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I have a quick, I have, I have something that I would like to share with you, sure. which I just thought about even this morning. Can you believe it or not? And it happens to me like, and I have, I happen to think about it a few times, but this morning I thought of it again. And the question is when people come into the synagogue and if they're not irregular, you know, Sing, you know, synagogue attendees, or even those who come regularly. After a while, I'm I'm thinking, you know, maybe they're they're coming every day, and you know, routinely doing the same thing every day. Is there something that we can do to get out of this? Still stay with this modality of like you know, praying to God. But doing it in a, in, 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 a, in a different way once in a while. And I thought of doing a class of what I did the, a while back. And I did a class and it was very well attended. It was prayers through meditation. So for me, 
to have someone come in and let's say if I have a group of four or five people and I sit around in a circle and I explain, you know, the most important parts of the prayer, but then we're not going to pray it in just your standard way of praying it, but through meditation, through giving you a little bit of an idea of what the prayer is about, what you're asking God and what is God asking of you and then meditating for a couple of minutes on each prayer and doing it your own way within your own heart and your own meditation. So it doesn't replace really the prayer, but it's another way, another channel of praying. Is this something that you are, you think you and your peers would be interested in? I mean, look, I'm definitely somebody who's a bit high wired. So I've always been interested in uh, considering uh, meditation. Many people recommend it to me. Um, uh, I, I, I have, I have, I'm in the trucking business and I have one of my, uh, my employees was, was great at meditating and then he got more responsibility and he was having problems sleeping and I asked him, what about the meditation? And he's like, oh, it does nothing. So <laughs> in trucking, it does nothing, but no, I, I'm, I'm just, just a funny anecdote. But I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I think that any creative approach to something will, 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 will draw people in because they're experiencing something new and again gives them the opportunity to further themselves as an individual so even if that if, if they come out of that and say I really felt that was a connection and I wanted to explore meditation further as an example there's nothing wrong with having that positive association between that event and that activity um, so I think if the synagogue can be kind of like a catalyst for some some call it activities that are outside of the specifics of, of prayer and Torah, you know, that you obviously we're going to incorporate that because that's, that's the main mandate yeah. of what we're trying to do. But if you end up, you know, having a social gathering because of it, or if you end up learning a new skill because of it, or uh, I think you start to do this association of uh, synagogue equals positive things. And then once people get into that, they get into that mindset, I think that will give you the platform you need to start you know, building a, a base of members that you can start getting ideas from and what can we do next week and, and get people to buy in, in in that respect. And I think we're poised for it. Um, you know, we've I've looked at what we've accomplished in the last year. Um, you know, it's sometimes you look at things and you want to do so much. Other times if you look back, I think um, you realize that some very good work was has been done. And uh, we have we had a very, very successful fundraising campaign thus far. Um, you know, there's still room to go, but, you know, people really stepped up to the plate. And that's an indication at the end of the day that people still really believe in the, in, in the community and synagogue and uh, that, that that would not be the case if, if, if people didn't feel that way. So there's clearly um, a strong bond. Uh, I think we have the right people to draw them in. And I think you got to start throwing some stuff on the wall to see what sticks and, and, and having that understanding that that's, that's your objective. And that something will stick. Something always does. Um, and I think it could be a very, very, very interesting experience. So I, I believe if, if we could, you know, I had a friend once asked, bring, I brought him to the Spanish. I wanted him to join. And he was going to this small synagogue, an older synagogue, where it was really, there weren't many people there, maybe like 14, 15, but he felt very special while he was there because, you know, he was, he was a new member or whatever it was. And then he came to the Spanish and he found, you know, the environment very impressive, but he didn't feel that same connection that it just wasn't that, that casual, fun kind of, kind of feeling that he felt. So I think you, we, I think you can tap into that. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for younger, especially slightly less observant religious uh, congregants, right? Who are not saying, oh, it's Saturday, I got to pray. I'm going to go wherever That's I can. Right. I'm going here, I'm going there. <laughs> there's a snowstorm, I'm going next door. Uh, so uh, I think I think that could be, and I think there's other activities that, I mean, the other day, like, um, if I remember somebody telling me that in Morocco, for example, like the synagogue was really almost the community center, right? It's where oh, it is. That's where yeah, kids yeah, yeah. Play sports, was where they learned instruments. Because I remember speaking to them that they were a very uh, musical family, and I said, "How did you guys get uh, ex exposed to music?" Went to the synagogue. Said, the synagogue had instruments, and you would just—that's it. You would go pick it up. So I think, you know, I think things like that are are, are always going to be positive, and uh, you know, and uh, and I think that there's a lot of cross interest that can be brought in. Uh, right. that, that people could be brought into to discuss and I think it would be a very successful yeah we have like we have a slew we have a slew of things that we've been thinking about so <clears throat> I really I really you know when I listen to what you're talking about I can hear uh, I can hear all of the uh, uh, I can hear all of the ideas in your mind and I have a feeling 
that this is what we need to feed off from, you know, because we need to, you know, we have ideas, we have things that we've implemented in other synagogues that we're implanting, implementing here. We have ideas of how to distribute our energy and to make it re really work. But uh, people like you can have so, f like, you know, a fresh uh, uh, view of and a direction that you really want. And that's important for us because, you know, we can go all over the place and not hit the mark. But if we listen to people like you who have the children, who have the, the uh, you know, the compass of, well, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm looking for in a congregation. And if we listen to people like you, then maybe we can hit the mark and, mm -hmm. and flourish. Look, in all fairness, I mean, that's what you're doing right now, right? Like where you're having yeah. conversations or engaging people. I saw another thing from uh, uh, another uh, event that Jennifer Michelle uh, was, uh, I think, presenting and so on. So, uh, yes. The other day. So I think like, you know, this is new. We haven't been, you know, doing that as much in the past, at least to my knowledge. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit more involved now, so I'm a little bit more aware of it. But yeah. I think the more that activities like that happen, the more that the, the yourself and, and Rabbi Pinto uh, put yourselves out there to, to see what people That's say. Right. It doesn't really matter if we do something and it doesn't exactly hit the mark because you know, you're know you gonna experiment to find what it is that's working. And if you don't put yourself out there, nothing's really gonna get done. Yeah, like that, that's just the reality of it. So I think the attitudes there, and I remember also like just some memories. I remember like, you know, there was once upon a time a softball team over at the, at the Spanish. And um, uh, so I think, you know, like, I think it's really just about involving ourselves as much as possible. And uh, if 10, 12 people show up for an event and they have a good time, well, that's great. That's, that's a Tuesday afternoon. And that Tuesday afternoon might not have had anything that day anyway. So what's the, what's the exact, I don't know what's going to come out of that. You know, that other person is going to say, you can only go. gain, you can only gain, ex yeah, you can only gain experience and moments, precious moments with people that you, you don't really, uh, you know, and we have a very diverse, of, of our, we have a very diverse membership too, right? So I think it's a really great opportunity for people to meet other people who are outside of their immediate circles uh, to learn a little bit about, uh, you know, you can meet, and that's been the fun part about the board. Uh, you know, I, I, we, I, I met a lot of great people within the Iraqi community and, and a lot of people who are not in the Iraqi community. Um, it's nice being exposed to intelligent, capable people who have good ideas. It, it's 100%. It's very, you can never get enough of that. So if you meet people like that and this happens to be in a social setting or an athletic setting or in a college musical setting or whatever it is, it's all positive stuff that people are going to strengthen their, their bonds. And that's your opportunity to see a couple of people hitting it off that, that didn't know each other. And, you know, you walk in there and say, Hey guys, can I see you on Saturday? Or yes. can I see you on Saturday? And, and you, you know, you, you, you and Rabbi Pinto have that ability to <laughs> call the, ra the rabbinical hustle. <laughs> We'll hook them. <laughs> we'll hook them in. You'll see you there. You know, there. Had, and, <laughs> and which is great. Which is what I you got to do. Absolutely. Alex, thank you. If I had the opportunity to say, you know what, let's do a commercial, you know, like a commercial for, for Spanish and Portuguese synagogue, <laughs> I would bring you in because, you know, <laughs> listen, truthfully, you, you are saying things that are so important and timely right now that you know you're telling people are general because it coming from us it's a different different way different story but coming from a congregant somebody who's involved somebody who's on the board and saying look we're so diverse we're we're so eclectic and it's an amazing thing to be able to see all these people when you come in even if it's once in a while so we're not asking you every day day or not a week but when you come in wow connect connect with people that you you know look I they're sharing the, the same idea on synagogue wise you know i always felt one of the biggest strengths of the spanish and portuguese is, was its diversification i always felt that it was just interesting that you know and I, I don't know but i don't believe there's any other congregation in montreal that fits that criteria right most not most that are, diverse not that diverse they're usually specifically yeah. a sephardic uh, community or a nishkenazi community or yeah. i mean i would say i guess the chabad uh, is it has uh, some diversification there but in terms it also of has a, eclectic, but I mean, it's still more, yeah. Yeah, but, I think you know, we should call ourselves unity, unity through diversity. I think so. I think it's, I think, and I think that's something to be very proud of because I think at the end of the day, um, like, uh, it's nice to meet different 
Jewish families from different backgrounds, seeing who you connect to, uh, seeing. And I see with my kids sometimes too. Like I see my kids um, in school with my son, you know, it just happened that it, his two best friends, you know, like one's Egyptian and one's Lebanese. So like, you know, it, it's, it's just fun to see that. And then you see these people in synagogue that you didn't know them before because they were just other, you know, members that were part of a different community. So you never really, and then, you know, I saw that with my son, David, when, you know, he came in and saw a couple of his buddies and oh, I don't know, they go to my synagogue and I'm going to go play with them. And, <laughs> and I think that's great. I think, I think it's there. We got the same way that you meet parents yeah. through other parents, through school and kids, you make friends the same way through, through, through the congregation, it's a very natural place for that to happen. So I think, and I think there's a lot of young families these days. We're seeing it like Amazing. in my neighborhood where I live in Hampstead, there's just so many young families and uh, it's, it's a nice thing to see. Uh, so I think we're pretty well poised. I think we have a lot of work cut out for us. I, I think we always will. I mean, I think that's just the way it is. We so always, it's, it's a work in, it's a it's work in a work progress. progress. It's always a work in yeah. progress, but there has been progress is what I'm, what, what I, what I, what I and, uh, and I hope that with this very strong uh, executive uh, and board that, you know, we have now in a strong clergy with some adjustments that could be made to maybe being a little bit more efficient on how we execute and stuff like that, which I know are being discussed. Absolutely. Anyway. It's not like people are denying that that needs to be done. So there seems to be a very strong willingness to try to, to do things in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a slightly different way to, to adjust accordingly to the realities that we're in right now. And I think uh, all in all, uh, I believe that we've seen some wins and we've seen some success and I, and I think there's more ahead. So um, I, hope, I hope we'll be able to continue and I hope, uh, hope the synagogue will thrive and uh, and all right. the members will as well. You you are I'm, okay. I'm declaring you are mascot. I don't care. Don't what you say. I can be the cheerleader. <laughs> I can be the S and P cheerleader. I'll I'll lead. I won't worry about pop balls or anything. But I'll, I can still. You go are ahead, cheerleader, you know. my man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you from Thanks the bottom of me. my heart, man. I have to tell you, Oren, it's always always a pleasure to speak with you, to see you, and see you and your family. And I want to wish you all the best. And good luck with that little puppy. You're going to have fun. Thank you. And if, if, by the way, if you need anything like a cage or whatever, I have it. I, I think I found a, I think I'm going to come to synagogue and ask him to get this, uh, ask Hashem to take care of this puppy for me. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I promise you one thing. If you really want, I'll, I'll, ha I'll have his bark mitzvah. <laughs> his bark mitzvah. That's be great. I'll be, I'll tell I'll my, teach my, him his bark I'll mitzvah. I'll tell my kids right now. They're going to be very happy. They're, they're <laughs> okay. going to ask me about that. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom for, a, well, for a, in a couple of days. I want to wish you all the best. And Oren, thank you, my brother. And keep up thank the good you. work. Uh, uh, thank Danny. you. I appreciate everything. God bless you. Thank you. Ciao.